First of all, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come and watch this video. Today I'm going to be talking in depth about optical magnifiers, how they work, what they do, what the numbers mean, um, and the advantages and disadvantages between them. But I'm also going to be looking at optical magnifiers as well, and what the difference is between optical magnifiers and electronic magnifiers. Some of it might be applicable to you, some of it might not. Magnifiers, a lot of people think they're really, really simple, but after working with them for many years, I can confuse most people if I really try. But I'll try and make it clear for you exactly what the numbers mean, because that's normally the most confusing part and the, the different types. So I'm going to start off with a really, really basic magnifier. So this is the most popular magnifier. Um, it's called a Schweitzer, which is the brand who make them. It's a German company, and the range is the Ergolux. Okay, so as you can see from the video here, there's two different types of magnifiers I've got in my hands. Uh, there's a big one and there's a little one. The differences between them is the magnification level. So as magnifiers get smaller, so this one here is an example, as they get smaller, they get stronger. So straight away, just by comparing these two, I know that that one is a lot weaker than that one. These are both ends of the spectrum. So this is one of our weakest magnifiers. This is one of our stronger magnifiers. So straight away, I can tell that that's weaker than that just by the size of the glass, which brings me to probably my most popular question that I ever get asked. So as an example, somebody might say to me, James, I've got a 10 times magnifier. Is it possible I can get another 10 times magnifier but see more in through the lens, which means getting a bigger lens? And unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Magnifiers are a really, really simple concept. They're made up of glass, or, or used to be glass, it's now premium grade plastic. And basically, the thicker the plastic or the glass, the stronger the magnifier is. So straight away, the glass on this one will be thicker, and to get the thickness in the glass, it needs to be smaller. Okay, so these are both ends of the spectrum. In this particular range, we do 16 different types of magnifiers at different strengths. Some people will work in diopters, some people will work in times magnification. Schweitzer, which is the brand that we sell, they work in diopters and I'm told that diopters are more accurate than times magnification, but that's a totally another debate. The simplest way of knowing what magnification is from diopters, so both of these magnifiers have a light switch here, and then just in this round circle, it says 6D. So the D stands for diopters. Other magnifiers might say 12X, which means it's 12 times. The simplest way of working out diopters into times magnification is to simply divide it by four. So this one's a 6D, so six diopters divided by four, means that that's a 1.5 times magnifier and it's as simple as that exactly the same for the smaller one it's a 48 diopter divided by 4 that means it's a 12 times magnifier and that's the simplest way of working it it's accurate enough um, something else we have on our magnifiers at the bottom here is a number and that number there so this particular one says it's quite small print so you probably can't see it so clearly on my camera but it says 4000 K now what that stands for is 4500 kelvins which is the light temperature that the magnifier gives each of our magnifiers comes with a different bulb for a different light temperature so we do three different ones 2700 4500 and 6500 and basically Underneath here, so the light switch, if I just turn that on, it illuminates what's underneath. The different light temperatures give different shades, uh, shades of whites, and depending on your eye condition, you might be light sensitive and some light temperatures suit better than others. So straight away, although magnifiers are really simple, and I've only got two here, if you think that we do 16 different versions of this, because there's 16 different strengths in magnification, and then we do a different one for each light temperature. So there's three. So that means that we've got a total of 48 different magnifiers just in this range. So they are very simple, but the numbers mean a lot. And it also means that you get lots of different variances of them. 
that said, using them is really, really basic. Basically, if you want the lights on, the light button has two different sections, so it's got two clicks, off, on, and then bright. And basically that just illuminates what's underneath. Hand magnifiers, which is what these are, means that you can hold them up to things and that's what it'll magnify. Um, most important thing with optical magnifiers is getting the distance right between the subject and obviously the height that it's in focus. And once you've done that, you also have to get the focal length right between your eye and you might move your head a little bit if you are using one to get a good spot on your eye, again, dependent on your eye condition. And that's magnifying whatever you point it at and the focal length is correct. It can be quite difficult to do this, especially if you've got some dexterity problems or you've got the shape because the magnifier is always moving. And that leads me on to a different type of magnifier. So this one here is what we call a stand magnifier. It does exactly the same job as the other two. However, it sits on a base. And what the base does is it gets the focal distance exactly right. So again, I'll turn that on. It illuminates underneath. So there's a light shining underneath there. It illuminates it, but I haven't got to try and balance it to get my focal length right. Because it sits on this stand, the stand does all the focusing for you. So then you just need to get your eye at the correct height, look through it, and that's what it's gonna magnify. Uh, just to prove my point, going back to the other two and where the readings are, so this one is a 2700, which means the light is a little bit warmer than these because these were 4500 Kelvins. So this one's 2700 Kelvins. And up here it says 12D, which means it's a 12 diopter. Divide that by 4, which means it's a 3 times magnifier. Stand magnifiers do have advantages, disadvantages to hand magnifiers. So hand magnifier, stand magnifier. The problem with hand magnifiers is as your eyes deteriorate, you might need to go back and get reassessed. So if your eyes deteriorate and suddenly you need more magnification, it might mean that this one's not strong enough for you, so therefore you have to go back to whoever issued it to you, get retested and they'll say, yeah, your eyes have deteriorated. I need a, You need a stronger magnifier. So, that might mean a trip to the low vision clinic or to the optician that issued it to you or to your local charity, totally depending on where you got that magnifier from. The advantage of the stand magnifiers, uh, and again, it depends on which type you go for, but this particular one, if your eyes deteriorate, you can actually just take the, the head off the handle and then put a stronger one on. So as an example, you might find that on one day, if you are eye condition flexors you might have a bad day so you might put a stronger head on and then the next day your eyes might go back to normal and then you change the head and put a weaker one on so basically they're just called head and handles and that's pretty much it really in terms of the difference between a hand and a stand like I say it's just the focal length and the balance it trying to get the height right the, the stand magnifier does that for you Again, given the strengths, so you can see the difference in the heads. So that's a three times one, and that's the top of the range one, which is much stronger. And as you can see, because it's much stronger, it needs to be much closer to the object for you to be able to get that magnification level. That said, there's been a few changes in recent times where they've adjusted hand magnifiers, and they've actually made a base for it so that it becomes a stand magnifier. So basically you can use it as a hand magnifier and you can use it as a stand magnifier too. So now I don't have to mess around trying to get my focal distance right because the stand does that for me and that just slots in there and away I go. One of the other advantages to this particular type of stand magnifier once I put it in the, the stand is that this one here is encased. This particular one isn't. So that means that I've got both hands free to do things underneath there. And I'll try and show you a better view of that. So there's the magnifier. I can put my hands underneath and I've got a perfect view of what's underneath there now, which means I can do things like write and do hobbies underneath there. The other good thing about these stands is you can actually sit them at a different angle as well. And so if you are doing something underneath there, that just means that I can do things here 
and again I'm not relying on having to hold the magnifier with one hand and then only having one hand free to do something. It's also a much uh, cheaper solution because with this way you might find that you use the hand magnifier in a supermarket but then at home you want it to use it as a stand magnifier so straight away you've then got two magnifiers. Obviously the beauty of the Ergo range and this one's called an Oculux one so it's just a different build quality really, not quality but a different build so different the way that it looks is slightly different. So yeah, so the beauty of that is you might use a stand magnifier at home but use your hand magnifier when you go to a supermarket for prices, labels, things like that. Is obviously the beauty of the stand is you can leave that at home, use this as a hand magnifier and then when you get home you've got a stand magnifier too. So it just saves you having the need for multiple magnifiers and obviously it also saves you money because you're not having to buy two, you're just buying a base which works out a lot cheaper than buying two magnifiers. Where do you get the magnifiers from? Generally we don't supply magnifiers directly to consumers and the reason for that is we supply the majority of the hospitals in the UK. So when you're diagnosed with an eye condition normally the first place you go is the low vision clinic and normally you're referred to them through your optician and then the eye clinic will then assess you and give you the best advice that they can but they will also issue one a magnifier that's relevant to your eyes free of charge and so the good side of them is they are obviously low in cost to you or, or free and the beauty of the hand magnifiers is they're very lightweight and they're very portable and the other advantage of them is they obviously magnify things but they also illuminate as well so straight away there's some good points. The negative points on hand magnifiers I find is as they get stronger obviously they are fixed focus so if, as I said earlier if your eyes deteriorate you will have to go back to the hospital get reassessed and that can be a timely process. But also, as they get stronger, the focal length, as we've seen by the little stand magnifier, is you have to get very, very close, both with your eye and with the, the magnifier, to the subject. Um, and I can find the problem with that is you see very, very little information in one go. And obviously, I'm only referring to a strong magnifier higher here. The stronger they are, the less you see. So straight away that's one disadvantage. The other disadvantage I find with them is if you are trying to read something, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either go very close to the subject here or if we just look at the other camera. You, the easiest way to actually use them is to hold the subject up and then move the subject as opposed to the magnifier. But again, it's quite a tiring process, um, particularly on the stronger ones. I think that's pretty much the extent of magnifiers. They run on batteries, which are just replaceable batteries. This one really simple, there's a case here. It's a one piece design, so a lot of people, especially if you go back a few years, you used to always see magnifiers with sellotape around the back because they'd lost the cover. The covers are, are actually part of the design now, so you just open that up. There's your batteries, just replace them and away you go. Again, a few recent changes. A few people were saying that they were struggling to change batteries. So we've actually designed a little pad here that would plug into the wall. And it's called an induction charger. Uh, it does work on some induction mobile phones as well if you're up on your technology. But basically, rather than me changing the batteries, all you do is simply place the magnifier on top of the pad and that will recharge the battery that's inside the magnifier so I don't have to keep changing them. That's about it on the optical side of magnifiers. I'm now going to touch on a couple of electronic magnifiers and then explain the differences between an optical magnifier and electronic magnifier. So let me just move, make some space here. So, so basically all of our electronic magnifiers normally have a number after them. So this particular one is called a Compact Plus 4.3. This is called a Ruby XL5. We do others like a Compact 6, Compact 7, Compact 10. The list is endless. Normally the number within the title of the product represents the screen size. So if this was called uh, a Compact Plus 4.3, 
it just means that it's a 4.3 inch magnifier and that's measured on the screen size so for corner to corner is 4.3 inches this one's a 5 inch so corner to corner it's a 5 inch with any electronic magnifier basically the bigger the screen the higher levels of magnification it will offer generally 4.3 is the smallest we do at the moment I think and then we did previously do a three inch but it was discontinued and I think the reason for that is when you're using a three inch magnifier you're probably at the lower end of the optics scale so you would probably find an optic is fine rather than an electronic straight away the advantages to electronic magnifiers is the magnification levels will pretty much go higher than any optical magnifier and so let me just quickly turn one on and we'll have a play. So straight away it gives me a battery indicator and whatever I place it on, it magnifies. Nothing complicated, that's all I've done. Turned it on and basically the buttons on the top control it. So there's a plus and a minus here. I'm just making that, that text bigger and smaller just by pressing a button. As I said earlier, these optical magnifiers are fixed focus so if you're having a bad day unless you've got lots of different magnifiers around you might have to find one that's suitable for that day or if your eyes deteriorate over time you might find that you need to keep going back to the hospital to get stronger ones stronger ones stronger ones and eventually if you get to that stage you will pretty much end up with an electronic one anyway it might might be a bigger one than this but you you generally end up with one once you get to the end of the scale with the optics the other thing i like about the electronic magnifiers particularly over hand magnifiers is that they are auto focus so i'm not always going up and down trying to find the, the perfect focal length for the magnifier it's got a camera in there so the camera's doing all the work for me but more importantly the biggest uh, advantage for me over uh, a normal magnifier is the ability to change contrast and colors uh, and again depending on your eye all i'm doing is just pressing a button here and that navigates through different colors i can go in and program it to any color i want so straight away again depending on your eye condition the color change can make a massive difference normally especially if you're light sensitive because obviously something that sticks out with a lot of light having a back black ground can make a huge difference but everybody is different uh, the ele electronic magnifiers also are straight away uh, stronger than optics so i'm generally seeing quite a few more words on there at the same strength as an, an optical magnifier and again that's just down to the cameras that are used in them something else you can do with electronic magnifiers so this particular one has a handle that just folds back in on itself and the beauty of that is I can use it with a handle as well and I can just move along as, as I read and I'm not also being very very close to the magnifier which means that obviously ergonomically it's better because you're not always bending or trying to get close to something which can be, be quite tiring on your neck the downside of electronic magnifiers um, straight away obviously is the cost they're not issued generally through low vision schemes however we do work nationally with different charities some of which will help you but feel free to ask me questions about that and at the end or leave some comments and I'll gladly give you some information something else you can do with electronic magnifiers um, that you can't do with the optical ones so this is just something that came through the post today i'm hoping it's junk mail is actually take a photograph so if you've got something on there and you want to remember it basically i've taken a picture of that and it's stored it on the screen so straight away if i want to take that number to the telephone i can do more importantly a lot of people use it in places like supermarkets they'll hold the magnifier up to the the object so i've got some paper over here with my name on it so that could be a price list or a, a label, a sell by date, a price at a supermarket. Hold the magnifier up to it, just press the freeze button and that's going to store it on there. That means you can then magnify it, change the colours, but also more importantly bring it closer to your eye so you can read it better. As soon as I press it, it vanishes again and now it's just back to normal. And principally, that's how, an a very, very basic, this is the most basic one we do, that's how uh, an electronic magnifier works. 
trying to think of other downsides generally they do come in different weights depending on the screen size but generally they are a little bit more heavier than optical magnifiers and the other obvious downfall is that you don't get issued through them through the low vision clinic you do have to buy them privately that said i think you do get a lot more life out of an electronic magnifier pure and simply because you're not forever changing as your eyes change uh, and that's pretty much as simple as it is. Some of them, this one, like I say, does have a free freeze frame. Some of our higher end ones, uh, you can actually save the image as well. But generally, most people just use it just to capture a little bit of information, take it away with them. That's as simple as it is. So that one's called a Compact Plus. Sorry, I didn't give you the name of it. Really, really popular one. Really portable. They all come in cases. All they also run on rechargeable batteries so you just plug them in and recharge it a bit like a mobile phone and then away you go turn it off but the next one up so the, these two do exactly the same as i said earlier the biggest advantage is the screen size so basically the functions are the same this one's a bit more colorful because it's got some yellow buttons on it but they do in fact do exactly the same but the advantage of this one is because it's got a bigger screen, your magnification levels go higher. But again, I can change contrast colours, take a screenshot, it does exactly the same. I generally prefer this one to the one below it, uh, simply because of the fact that this one sits up at a better angle, so it's more like that. So if I'm sat down reading, again going back to the ergonomics, it's just more comfortable to sit and read with. Equally, you don't have to use it like that. I can use it flat and then underneath here there's a handle I can fold out. It turns itself off when you do that because it's changing position. But then I can use it exactly the same as I was with this one with the handle as well. Or if you want to be really fancy, you can actually use it on its stand and then with the handle as well. And then you just move it over what you want to read. I think that's pretty much all I need to go through between the difference of them. Obviously, if anybody's got any questions, put your comments at the bottom or I'd happily answer them after this. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I will put some generic information about what I've shown as well, about the products I put in the comments section. And if anybody's really interested, I've got a similar demonstration tomorrow that's more interactive and I can answer questions and answers on that as well. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Please feel free to contact me if you need to. And like I say, that all that will be relevant at the bottom. Thank you.